The earliest claim to Christianity being practiced in China comes from a 4th century work titled Against the Pagans, in which the Christian apologist Arnubius writes that Christianity had spread as far as Sirica, which was an old Roman name for North China. No archaeological evidence has been found to support this claim, however, nor is it supported by other textual evidence. Whilst it appears unlikely that Christianity was practiced in China in the 4th century, what is known with more certainty is that in 551 AD, two unnamed Christian monks from India travelled to China. There they observed the methods for raising silkworms and producing silk. They later struck a deal with the Byzantine emperor Justinian I and smuggled silkworm eggs out of China, thus beginning the Byzantine silk industry. There is, however, no suggestion that these monks preached or proselytized during their time in China. It is the year 635 AD that can really be said to mark the beginning of Christianity in China. It was in this year that the Christian missionary Alapen, known as Aloben in Chinese, arrived in Chang'an, the capital city of the Tang Dynasty, today known as Xi'an. Alapen was a missionary from the Church of the East. The Church of the East was one of three major branches of Eastern Christianity which arose out of the Christological controversies of the 5th and 6th centuries. Its theology was influenced by the ideas of the 5th century Archbishop of Constantinople, Nestorius, which is why it is also referred to as the Nestorian Church. Amongst other things, it is claimed that Nestorius taught that there were two united but separate persons incarnated in Christ, one human and one divine. This is in contrast to the orthodox view that Christ was one person, holy man and holy divine at the same time. It should be noted that whilst this belief became known as Nestorianism, it is not clear whether Nestorius himself was actually advocating for this position. In 431 AD, Nestorius was formally declared a heretic, removed from his position and was eventually sent into exile. Later, churches aligned with Nestorius separated from the rest of the church. Facing strong opposition in the Byzantine Empire, they relocated to the Sassanid Empire, where they integrated with and influenced the established Persian Christian communities. From there, missionaries spread the Church of the East widely, across India, Central Asia, and eventually with Alopen, into China. When Alopen arrived in Chang'an, it was not only one of the most populous and prosperous cities in the world, it was also very cosmopolitan, containing large numbers of people from elsewhere in Asia and beyond. This cosmopolitanism was made possible by an unprecedented level of official toleration for, and even championing of, foreign cultures and ideas. Shortly after arriving in Chang'an, Alopen met with the famous Chancellor Feng Xuanling, who is remembered to this day as being one of the greatest chancellors in Imperial Chinese history. Alopen explained his religion to Feng Xuanling, who was so impressed that he arranged to have the holy texts that Alopen had brought with him translated into Chinese. He later arranged for Alopen to have an audience with the emperor himself to explain his religion. Following their meeting, the emperor gave official approval for Alopen to proselytize, and by the year 638, Christianity had gained acceptance at the highest levels of Chinese society. However, despite this acceptance, there is no evidence to suggest that court officials were converting to Christianity. In fact, the vast majority of converts in Chang'an were not local Han Chinese people, but people from the various Central Asian communities that were living in or travelling through the city. By proclamation of the emperor, Alopen was also granted permission to build a monastery with 21 monks. It is said that during the reign of Emperor Gaozong, from 649 to 683 AD, Christianity spread to every province of China, and there were churches in every city. And in the early 700s, China formally became a province of the Church of the East, under the name Bethsinia. In 781 AD, a stele, a type of stone slab monument, was erected in Chang'an to celebrate and document the arrival of Christianity in China. It is from this stele that we know about the mission of Alopen and the early development of the church in China. The stele is 2.79 meters tall and is carved from limestone. It is inscribed with both Chinese and Syriac writing, and the heading of the stele reads, a monument to the propagation in China of the luminous religion from Dachin. Dachin was the Chinese name for the Roman Empire. The inscription on the stele gives an overview of some of the key beliefs of Christianity, including the Genesis account of creation, the cross, 
the Trinity, and baptism. It goes on to recount the history of Christianity in China. The stele was buried in 845 AD and discovered by chance in the 17th century when it was unearthed by people doing work near the Chongren Temple in Xi'an. Today it sits in the Beilin Museum with other important steles from China. Christianity continued to grow in China throughout the 8th century, and the theologian and sinologist Martin Palmer claims that as it did, it took on a uniquely Chinese, syncretic form. This belief is based partly on his understanding of the ideas contained within Christian scrolls found in the Morgau Caves, known as the Jesus Sutras. This idea is not widely shared by other scholars, however, who believe that the Christianity practiced in China at this time was fundamentally the same as that practiced in other provinces of the Church of the East. The year 840 marked the beginning of the reign of Emperor Wu Zong. In contrast to other Tang emperors, Wu Zong was intolerant of foreign religions from the outset of his rule. Buddhists and Taoists had long competed for influence in the imperial court and in Chinese society in general. Emperor Wu Zong was a devout Taoist, and his devotion to his faith, combined with political and economic concerns, led him to release an edict in 842 AD requiring all Buddhist monks to surrender their wealth to the government and for monasteries to enact various reforms. A series of increasingly oppressive edicts followed, and in 844 AD, Emperor Wu Zong declared that all Buddhist monasteries and shrines should be destroyed, all monks defrocked and foreign monks expelled from the country. A final edict in the year 845 extended this crackdown from Buddhism to all foreign religions, including Christianity. Although Emperor Wu Zong died just one year later, and Buddhism in China would soon recover, the comparatively small Christian community in the country went into terminal decline from which it would not recover until the Yuan dynasty, some three centuries later. Writing in Baghdad in the year 987, the famous bibliographer Ibn al-Nadim claimed that he met a Christian monk returning from China who told him that Christianity was just extinct in China. The native Christians had perished in one way or another, the churches which they had used had been destroyed, and there was only one Christian left in the land. Whilst the number of Christians evidently declined substantially after 845 AD, and public worship disappeared completely, the claim that Christianity had been entirely eradicated from China may not be correct. In fact, Christian gravestones have been discovered in China which date from the Song and Liao dynasties, which reigned from the 10th to 13th century. Moreover, Martin Palmer claims that when researching Christianity in China in the late 1990s, his team found that every village around the Dachim Pagoda was Christian. And when asked, the inhabitants of those villages said that they had been Christians for over a thousand years. Therefore, it seems possible at least that Christianity may have remained in China continuously since its entry into the country in 635 AD although the number of adherents would have been minuscule post-845, and they would have had to practice their faith underground. <laughs>